how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so we are about midway through December at this point. This is the weekend when uh, Welcome to Mary Sale is free. <laughs> I didn't almost forget the title of my book, I promise. Um, so still waiting on progress for the cover for um, No Doors Allowed. Um, my cover guy has had a lot going on recently and I'm trying not to put too much pressure on him because I know exactly how stressful that stuff has been. Um, and he's been fairly quiet, which is usually a huge indication of um, him being fairly stressed. So trying not to worry too much about it. Um, usually once he actually starts working on them, they don't take that long to come together. It's that initial, uh, that initial getting into the working on them uh, process and I'm fingers crossed it shouldn't take as long as it would for the um, paperback covers because there's not a paperback version of No Tools Allowed coming anytime soon because it is a giant 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 doorstop of a book and it's longer it's longer than the colours I see and the colours I see is a doorstop of a book so um as I said previously, there is no plans at the moment to release any of the Never Rating collection as paperbacks. I mean, I know Pain of Boy has been in paperback in the past, but um, yeah, there's no current plans to release any of them as paperback at this moment in time. Um, yeah, they, I, I, th I think they need to be doing a, a little bit better in terms of sales and well, all my books need to be doing better in terms of sales. Um, and I need to figure out a more cost-effective way of getting a paperback of the Never Age books out there. Um, whether that's splitting the doorstops into two or more smaller books, which is something I have debated doing in the past. Um, they are written to be doorstops, that's, that's kind of the thing, they are written to be one big long continuous story and I'm not sure how well they would work splitting them up and I would feel kind of bad making people buy <laughs> the individual parts if I were to do that um, for the paperback version. Um, so yeah, at this moment in time, it's a case of I'm not totally sure what the best solution is. Um, I'm trying to figure out what the best solution is. Uh, as I've said before, I'm based on the size of the 13 point font uh, when it's actually printed in the book format. Um, or in the book format that uh, KDP makes you use. I think I might be able to go down to 11 point and it not be too small, which might just nudge them into the right sort of length to be cost effective and not be hideously overpriced. Um, but then I also run the risk of the of the print being too small and, and people not necessarily getting on with the small, with the small print, which uh, yeah, it, it's why, for now at least, I kind of feel better not having them in paperback. I mean, I know I could technically release Hyena Boy again in paperback. Um, all that would really take is the, the formatting of it for, um, for KDP's version of paperbacks and then getting my cover guy to modify the, uh, the cover that was created for the Lulu version of the paperback. Um, but yeah, it's it's a bit of a tricky one. It's It really is a bit of a tricky one um, just because they are such long books. I mean, I know Heine Boy isn't, but the other three are such long books. I mean, I'm, I, I have We Giants open behind this recording window and that is in A4 12 point format, um, 558 pages. So 
yeah, they're they're not they're not short books, and that is the shortest of the three doorstops. So yeah, it's it's one of those where certainly for um, apart from We Giants, for all the books that I'm planning to release next year, they will have a paperback version because they have been written to be a fairly standard length for young adult. Um, and I, you know, I, I deliberately did that. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, the, the, the process by which they were written, the idea and intent behind them, I wanted, um, I didn't necessarily want to be writing a series when I first started writing them, but um, they, that's, that's kind of how it went and, and kind of where it went. Um, and I managed to very much standardize, not necessarily the page length, but um, I managed to very much standardise how those books turned out. So they're all slightly varying in length and slightly varying in word count, but they're all 19 chapters long. Uh, they're all within a reasonable length for a young adult book. And they will all have paperbacks. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with leaving the Never and the Never Eighteen collection proper just being um, on Kindle until I find a more cost-effective way of doing it. Um, it's just the way it's just the way that particular series is. Um, I, I, there are people out there who do particularly like reading really long books. Um, I've met a few of them recently and, and they also write really long books. So I'm certainly not the only one out there producing things that are to some fairly daunting. Um, I think if I get, I think if I get successful enough to um, be able to uh, consider getting audio books sorted um, for them, then they'll probably do fairly well in audio format. Maybe. <laughs> but there's no guarantee there either. Um, my, my thoughts about it all at the moment is get the remaining books of the Nebrating Collection out there. Once they're out there, they're out there. That's, that's good um, because of the control I have over them. If I need to go in and edit details here and there, then you know I, I can, will, and have done that. So <laughs> even if it's just like correcting uh, like little grammar or spelling errors or punctuation errors that I notice after the fact for whatever reason, and that's that's for all the books. If if you know somebody points something out to me or if I notice it myself, I do go back in, uh, correct it, and then get the updated version out, out there. Um, I've not had to do any major um, plot changes. I try to, you know, if if, I, if it needs a major plot change, then there, there was something wrong with it. You know, that that should have been there to begin with. Um, I'm, you know, I try to avoid if I think that's going to happen, releasing anything because you know that it's not the best thing. Um, I think the only time where the books have received a major ish overhaul um is when echo and hyena boy moved from lulu to kdp um they both got a re-edit for hyena boy it wasn't even a, a, any major plot changes it was changing a few lines here and there um in order to better align it with the colors i see um which had been released at that point um it, and again, it wasn't a case of it didn't work the way it was. It just works slightly better for those line changes um, because obviously I'd worked really hard at making sure that they were, uh, you know, coherently related, that they weren't contradicting each other. Um, it was just a couple of lines here and there that kind of made more sense, slightly edited. So I slightly edited those lines um, just to sort of smooth things out a little bit more. Um, and then for Echo, again, it wasn't a major plot overhaul um, as much as it was just changing a few lines here and there to sort of smoothen the plot up a little bit, to tighten things up a little bit. Um, 
obviously still missing grammar edits here. <laughs> so still missing occasional errors um, just because no writer is perfect. But um, in terms of like plot overhauls, no, I, you know, once once they're released, it usually means I'm happy with the plot. Um, and if I do sort of change anything, it might just be like a line here or there, um, just to sort of tighten up one thing or tighten up something else. Um, and you know, with with something like the Neverating Collection, where you get a lot of like crossover of of scenes and timeline stuff. Um, I've, I've been really tight I think, with um, with We Giants and No Dolls Allowed. I've been so tight, <laughs> so tight with uh, making sure that everything is like not contradicting each other. Like, oh, the amount of times where I will have to like double check like dates and the time scale and whatever else between those two books to make sure that I not messed up the continuity. <laughs> I'm fairly happy that they, they are fine, that they, you know, there, there aren't any major mistakes like that. Um, and obviously some of the differences between them aren't contradictions necessarily, but they're different perspectives because obviously it's two different main characters um, coming at things from two different angles. So of course they're not going to necessarily see a particular situation in the exact same way. They're going to interpret things slightly differently. You know, so things like that, that they're not contradictions, they're different perspectives. Um, and like, yeah, I, I've tried very hard. I mean, with um, Hyena Boy and The Colors I See, with some of their overlapping scenes, if there was a slight difference in dialogue or wording, or if, um, one of the characters said it a little bit extra than a different character than they, than they said in the other version or um, something like that. Jay's writing it from memory and Zell is experiencing it in the now. So Zell's version is probably what happened and Jay's version is probably how he remembers it. And so those, again, those aren't mistakes or contradictions. That is a deliberate decision to have those differences. In fact, I even went and I added some of those differences. <laughs> um, precisely because Jay is, um, Jay is remembering all this. This is, you know, this is stuff, you know, Jay is remembering it. He's an unreliable narrator, 100% unreliable narrator so of course there are going to be differences um whereas with um no doors allowed and with giants i've tried very hard to make sure there isn't so much of that there might be like every, every now and then uh the character might say something slightly different but again that that might just be like interpretation as much as possible i've tried to make sure that if i've made a change in one i make the same change in the other uh, if I remove a line from one, I make sure that I remove the line from the other. If I add a line, I make sure I add a line. Um, anything that that does sort of, it, it's, it's, I've missed it. I, I've, I've forgotten to, to do it. Um, for, for whatever reason, I've, you know, not made the change um, when I should have, and that's, that's more of a mistake <laughs> than necessarily a contradiction. Um, but again, you could just say, oh, well, it's this character interpreting it slightly differently or they've heard something slightly differently because, again, they're, they're too, you know, it happens where people can think that you've said something that is one thing and somebody else can think that you've said something that's a different thing. It happens all the time. Um, I, you know, I work in a noisy environment where people do have to do a lot of talking. And the amount of times where you'll mishear somebody um, is, is almost ridiculous. So the, the idea that maybe they both heard the same words, but not necessarily interpreted the words in the same way, you know, it, it, it still works. But as I said, as much as possible, I've tried to keep it consistent, um, or at least consistent for the bits that need to be consistent and where there does need to be a little bit of change and I've, I've done that little bit of change. Um, I won't go into what that's about, but there is a specific reason why certain things are slightly different. Um, but like one of the, you know, for, for um, 
the all of these sort of like overlapping companion things um, that I've done. Um, one version might have like a different beginning to the scene, another version might have a different end to the scene, so it's very rare that the scenes both start and end in the same place. Um, but they usually like the middle bit is usually the same, the bulk of it is usually the same, and then one might finish before a certain point or one might start before a certain point. Um, it, as I said, it's very rare for me to like, have an exact overlap with them, so that also accounts for some of the differences. Um, and yeah, no, it's it's been an interesting process, it's been a fun process, um, but that is part of the reason why these books are like massive doorstops. They, 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 they take their time with the characters and with the development of the characters. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it is what it is, they're, they're, they're my babies. Um, and I'm really looking forward to hopefully, fingers crossed, getting No Doors Out, No Doors Loud out before the end of the year. At the moment, that is mostly depending on my cover guy. And as I said, I know he's been through a fairly stressful time recently, so I'm not putting too much pressure on him. If I can't release it until the beginning of next year, fine. That's just the way that that's going to have to go this year. Uh, you know, with, with everything else that's gone on this year, that's like, minor minor issue um you know it, it's you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna hold it against him fingers crossed hopefully it does get out before the end of the year that would be you know fantastic um my plans for free promotions in the new year if i do get to release no doors allowed before the end of the year then the first new free book promotion free kindle book promotion of the new year will be no doors allowed um sort of like in the January sales or whatever. Um, and then probably The Colours I See followed by Hyena Boy because they all need to be fairly close together. And then it'll be Echo, and then it'll be the Two Doll Make Sun books. Um, I don't have any precise date for any of that at this point because obviously um, I need to release No Doors Allowed first before I can like plan that. Um, obviously, and, uh, obviously again, if No Doors Allowed Unfortunately, it does get pushed back into the new year, then um, then it'll be a case of um, shifting around my promos uh, a little bit. So that's why I've not made any definite decisions on when whatever will be uh, free in the new year um, or if I will. So that, that, that's one other thing that I have done. Uh, the never rating books have gone back up to being 199. Um, this is kind of a trial at the moment, um, just to see if it does make a difference. I mean, obviously 2020 has been a bit, a, bit of a crazy year, um, bit, of a, bit of an all over the place sort of year. Um, so I don't know if I will drop things back down to 99p again, or if I'll keep them at the 199 price, or if I move the others up to the 199 price. Um, but I'm sort of starting it with an ever rating collection because that's where the big doorstop books are. So it kind of makes sense. <laughs> and it's 199 in UK pounds. Um, it's I think 299 in dollar price in the dollar price. Um, for the US dollars and then it's various other prices depending on where you are. I again went through it and manually altered all the prices to be as fair as possible. Um, uh, you know, while still making about the same amount of profit uh, for each region. Um, some regions slightly more, some regions slightly less, um, sort of roughly the same. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> It, it's a trial period at the moment to sort of see if it makes a difference um, because of some advice that I've been given from some of my Twitter writer friends suggesting that underpricing might not necessarily be helping in terms of sales. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. That's all we can do right now. We'll see. Um, okay, so I hope you guys have found this one sort of interesting. I know it's been a little bit babbly, a little bit all over the place, mostly focused on the Never Rating collection, but you know, I fingers crossed have a Never Rating book coming out in the next few weeks. <laughs> fingers crossed.
Um, but yeah, I, I hope you found this sort of interesting. I hope you're looking forward to seeing what I will be talking about next time. And I will see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!